Hi everybody, this is Alan with HeadphoneReviewHQ.com and today I'm bringing you a review of the brand new FIO E11K headphone amplifier. So, if you aren't familiar with the original FIO E11, it was one of my favorite low-cost headphone amplifiers that was on the market, period. I mean, the level of neutrality that you got plus the amplification, the additional power you had for 60 bucks was just ridiculous. And now Fio's come to the market with the second version of the E11, which is the E11K, which is going to hit the market also at $60, and they've made a ton of changes to this device. So let's go ahead and start talking about some of the features of the new E11K. So first you'll notice on the front, you have your gain, your high and low switch, which are the i do like the new switches on these they're a lot easier to flip over but they're stiff enough to where they're not just going to bump into place like if you put it in your pocket so that's a lovely feature the dial itself has a nice click when you turn it on so you can feel it pop in uh, love it and it's got a nice smooth motion you can turn it with one finger if it's in your pocket it, it's got a really smooth motion to it and then the bass on and off, this is a change from the original E11. Uh, the original E11 had a two position EQ, so off, one, and two. This only has one, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Around on the back of it, they've also got their 3.5 millimeter inputs, so, or input and output, and they're both gold-plated this go around. You have your auxiliary input, which is where you'll plug in your media player connection. And then you have your headphone output, obviously is where your headphones go. And as is the case with most of the new FIO products, they're actually including micro USB charging ports so that they pretty much, if you've got you know a device around nowadays, if it's not an Apple device, you pretty much go in with micro USB. So uh, you can just use an existing cable you've got hooked into your computer or wherever you're going. So that's a nice feature. Now, another thing that you're going to notice about the new E11K is it's completely metal. The original E11, which again, same price, was completely plastic. This thing has the same build quality as the more expensive line of FIO products like the E17, the E07K, Andes. This thing has the polished metal look on it and it is really done extremely well. As a matter of fact, this is one of my favorite looking FIO devices I've used so far. I think I actually like the way it looks better than pretty much everything else I've touched, including the E12, which also is a nice looking device, but they've just really done a good job on this. It, it does not look like a $60 headphone amplifier. And then also, again, it comes with the bumper pads, which most of their amplifiers do. I highly recommend throwing these things on so that if you've got your headphones plugged into it on a desk, it won't slide off the desk. And it's also nice if you're laying it up against your phone or other playback device, it won't scratch up your phone's uh, plastic or metal backing. So um, again, just they've done a really nice job with this. Now, I do want to talk about a few design things that... that uh, or at least just one design thing that really drives me nuts is the volumes on the front of this thing as are the switches for the on off on the bass and the low and high gain which I really do like having those all up there but the power indicator is on the very back of this thing which means that if you've just got this sitting on your desk listening more than likely you're going to have the volume face towards you and the light's going to be in the back of it, so you're going to completely forget that you had this thing turned on. Now, with the fact that you can plug and play and charge and listen at the same time, it may not be as big of a deal nowadays, but I do find that more often than not, I forget to turn the thing off because that light's on the back of it. Uh, so other than that, there's really no nitpicks with the build quality. It is a gorgeous, well-feeling, great built device. So enough of that. Now let's talk about the sound quality and the actual amplification you get out of this thing. So similar to the E11, the original one, this thing has almost identical gain on it. As far as I could tell, like uh, compared to my Nexus 5, when I put this on high gain and crank it up, it's got about double the volume of my Nexus 5. So that's a decent amount of output. I'd say it's a good a good 50 to 75% louder than just an iPhone. And I've got an iPhone 4 and then uh, an iPad. So this thing can really put out some juice and I've powered up to 250 ohm headphones. Now, that being said, not all headphones are created equal. Some, even though they're 250 ohms, 
They may not be as sensitive as other 250 ohm headphones. So, you know, make sure that you do some checking before you go, you know, buying this thinking it's going to power it unless you could return it if you need to. But uh, just be aware, I have done 250 ohm headphones and it's done it pretty well, like moderately loud. It's not gonna blow your eardrums out, but it will do a decent job. Now, onto the actual sound curve on this. Mostly it's neutral, and there's a couple things that I want to address with that. First, it's got a slightly cooler sound to it than just coming directly out of my Nexus 5 or any listening device I tried, like my MacBook Pro or, or a Dell Precision workstation. It's just a touch cooler or darker in the low range, so that's one thing to note. But the one thing that I did note, and it was on the Grotto SR80s, which I use for checking out amplifiers because they're hypersensitive to the source that you plug them into, at least in the mid-range, is in the upper mid-range where a woman's vocals really are, there is a slight recess on this compared to the original E11. And I AB'd this, I don't know how many times, just making sure doing blind tests and, and pretty much they always came out to where this one had a just touch of roll off in the upper mids. And the thing is, it was really only noticeable on my Grotto SR80s, which again are hypersensitive to that type of thing anyways. Uh, but it, it was something that I could pick out. I had to listen for it, but I had to pick it out. So. Minus that though, it, and it's it's more of something that you notice when you're a being. It's probably nothing you would even really hear if you were just putting on the headphones and listening. So it's that minute, but I do want to point it out for those of you who are looking for the utmost, you know, nth degree of clarity. And these do sound wonderful, but they do have those two little signatures. Now. Other than that, they are extremely neutral. They actually sound very close to whatever the source is. And onto the bass boost. So another change from the original E11 to the E11K is that the E11K now does not have two levels of bass boost. It only has one, on or off. So the difference is, comparing this to the original E11, it's, it's somewhere north of what the one setting was on the original E11 but it is quite a bit back from the level two. So anybody that had messed with level two EQ on the original E11, most headphones would distort and you get some sort of clipping with that. On the E11K, the bass boost is really clean and it's pretty powerful. So I didn't notice any kind of clipping out on any number of headphones that I tried with these. And I've tried the, uh, the Biodynamic T51Is, the T51, P, the DT 1350s, the Audio Technica ATHM 50s, the um, Grotto SR 80s, um, the V Moda M 100s. Like I, I've tried a ton of headphones out with these, and again, very neutral. And I, I did notice that the bass, if you were wanting to listen to something and give it a little bit of kick, it did a wonderful job on that. So overall, uh, first, Theo, thank you for sending this out for review. I mean, it, it is a wonderful little device. It, it's hard to believe that you guys are cramming all this into $60, which is what the original one, I think, still sells for. So uh, overall, my opinion is fantastic. For $60, it's going to be hard to beat this. Now, I'm not saying there are not other amplifiers out there that will compete in the same arena because there are. Uh, the PA2 V2, which is slightly more, which I need to get around to reviewing. It's been forever and I, I need to do that. Um, but this is a wonderful device and the, and the bass boost is something that a lot of people will find that it is something that they enjoy, especially like on my SR80s. They need a little bit of kick in the bottom end as far as I'm concerned. And this does it perfect without going overboard. Uh, I, I really like this device. Like I said, it has a few minor, like ever so minor uh, differences in the actual sound curve compared to the original source, but overall a killer device. And I get this question all the time. Should I get the E6 or should I get the E11? I'm going to say this for both the E11 and the E11K. And I've got the E6 and maybe I'll get around to reviewing it one day. Oh, I guess it just never really struck me as a device that I fell in love with that much. So I never really took the time to sit down and review it. But here's the deal. The E6 is okay. 
with some headphones like the ATHM 50s, which are very forgiving of of the source, they they stay pretty true to their own sound regardless of what you plug them into. The E6 is okay with those. The E11 is 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 definitely in a league above the E6. It's neutral. The E6 is not. The E11K is neutral. The E6 is not. So just if you're going to ask me that question, pretty much know that I would tell you just about every time if you can save up and get the E11 if it's within your budget. The E6 will get the job done, but no, like on the SR80s, I can't even plug it up to them because it changes the sound signature so much that I don't enjoy it. And they do have a neutral setting on there, which is okay. Now, for the price range that the E6 comes in, it's a decent little amplifier, but again, this thing is superior in pretty much every way. So just know that, and uh, again, that's, that's just a little side on that. But hopefully you found this review helpful. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Share it with your friends and family. There's a share button down below in YouTube if that's where you're watching it. Or if you're on my site, I'll have some share buttons as well. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the form below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I've got a great bunch of people in the community that also will, will chip in and help you out as well. And also, Come check me out on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash HQ or hit me up on Twitter. I, for whatever reason, I like Twitter a lot. So you can get me there at HQ. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't know that there is. So I've got a ton more reviews coming your way. Please do subscribe and uh, I will see you here in the near future. Appreciate it. Bye.